Hello world, it's Siraj and I built a prize predictor app using machine learning. And in this video, you're gonna see how to build it yourself to predict the winning NFL daily fantasy sports player. And it's okay, but I really wanted to compare it against Odds Jam's Fantasy Optimizer. This thing is awesome. Given any team on any fantasy sport, whether it's prize picks, which is legal in California, or any other fantasy sport, you can just pick that player and they use machine learning and all of this data science behind the hood to give you the optimal picks. OddsGem is not your average tool. It's an engine that's been embraced by over 10,000 professional full-time sports bettors. And the reason is because OddsGem reads in more than a million odds and lines from various fantasy sites in real time. This means it can instantly point out discrepancies, which helps users get a real edge and find those hidden inefficiencies in the market. And if you're thinking of diving into Odds Jam after watching this, make sure to use my code, Siraj20, when signing up. It's a special code for our community, and I've dropped a link in the description. So in this case, we would pick Charlie Jones and maybe Chase Brown as our two picks. But my model says something different. My model says pick Josh Allen, which has the highest predicted fantasy points, but also Justin Jefferson. So we're gonna decide which model is better. Is it Odds Jam or is it this model that I built myself? And we're gonna bet money on this, $500 on these two players that Odds Jam picks and then $500 on the two players that my model predicts. And then we're gonna compare which one was better. In the meantime, let's go through this six step process. The first step is gonna be for us to scrape the sports data from the web, real time sports data. The next step is for us to build these three models to predict the NFL player, given you know all of these features, what is their fantasy point score going to be? And then the one with the highest fantasy point score, that's the one we're gonna pick. And that's gonna be different every day for daily fantasy sports. And once we have all these models trained, then we're gonna build, we're gonna pick the best model, and that's gonna be the model we use. Now, we could just use this model ourselves on our local machine but I think it'd be really cool to try to orchestrate an entire machine learning pipeline to serve this publicly. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna serve this to the web using a tool called Fast API. This is a web deployment tool written in Python. It's very similar to Flask, um, but it's better and it's newer. So we're gonna use Fast API to deploy this tool to the web. And then we're gonna use something called Airflow. And what Airflow does is it orchestrates an entire machine learning pipeline and you can see what that looks like here. This website, by the way, mymlops.com, bookmark it. Because what it does is it's got this really cool tool that lets you see what a machine learning pipeline should look like and what tools that you should use for all of these tasks, whether it's experiment tracking or data versioning or pipeline orchestration, and then all the tools that we could use, whether it's weights and biases or DVC and the reasons, the pros and cons behind all these tools. And you can see in this stack that I've built, all of these tools are open source. Apache Airflow, Jupyter Notebook, MLflow. These are all open source tools. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna need our model to continuously learn because players, stats, all this stuff changes all the time. If you're not familiar with daily fantasy sports, the idea is that a player in this fantasy sport, their score is gonna go up or down compared to how their real life performance is. So given this real life performance data for all these players and teams, We'll try to predict the player's fantasy points in this fantasy world. Now, it, the difference between daily fantasy sports and regular sports betting is that this is more player-centric rather than team-centric. We're not picking the winning team, we're picking the winning player. And that's a little bit more interesting. There's also fixed payouts for uh, daily fantasy sports, which is also nice you know, to have that certainty. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna use Airflow to not just have our model learn from the sports data once and train once, but to do this consistently, and Airflow will schedule tasks to pull data, to train a model, to deploy it every single day for us. And the last step is for us to deploy this to Google Cloud. And Google Cloud is where people are going to actually use the model. And there's a lot of different tools we could use to deploy this model, whether it's Modal or whether it's Vercel. But remember, these are cloud wrapper tools. And the trade-off is always going to be the cost of these tools, whether it's CPU hours or GPU hours, and the actual complexity of using those tools. So the cheaper a tool is, the more complex it's going to be to use. And the more expensive a tool is, the easier it's going to be to use. 
And so all these tools are essentially wrappers around the three main cloud providers, whether that's AWS, GCP, or Azure. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna deploy this app to our own instance on Google Cloud, our own VM virtual machine, that is going to schedule and run these tasks every day with Airflow, which we will have installed in our virtual machine. So that's the idea. We're gonna have this sports betting app uh, basically update itself every single day with new data, retrain itself and give us fresh predictions that we can use and compare that to Odds Gems Fantasy Optimizer. That's the idea for this video. So let's get started. The first step for us is to scrape that sports data. Now, the best place to do that for the NFL is footballdb.com. And at footballdb.com, we can see all of these stats for a season and all of these player stats as well, whether it's at the team level or at the player level, which is what we want. And we can look through all of these stats. And what we want to do is we want to scrape this data from the web and turn it into a nice little CSV file that we can look at locally. And I'll show you, spoiler alert, what that CSV file is eventually going to look like. It's going to have all the players here in one column with all of these features in another column, the number of yards, touchdowns, all that stuff, domain-specific knowledge, whether it's NFL or weather prediction. There's always domain-specific features. But it's very simple. This is a supervised learning problem. In fact, it's even more simple than picking the winning team. We're just trying to predict the target variable, a single column. And what is that column? It's the fantasy points score for a given player. So that's what this uh, data set has for us. And what we want to do is given all this data set, let's predict the fantasy points for a given player on the NFL, in the NFL, um, at for the second season, right? So we've got first season data, but let's predict the second season. And that's the idea. So how are we going to do this? So if we go to GitHub and search for fantasy football prediction apps, which we always should before predicting our own, we will see this guy's uh, capstone project that was released two months ago. And rather than running this locally, what we can do is we can run this in the cloud with code spaces. And code spaces is awesome because it allows us to run an instance of this code in the cloud without having to run it locally. So we'll open up a code space and we will run this code in the code space and we will step through the Jupyter Notebook, which will allow us to compile all the code, step through it, see what works, see what doesn't work, um, and you know, really assess it for ourselves, which I love about Jupyter Notebooks and I love about uh, GitHub code spaces over Replit, which doesn't have as much CPU time. So if we go to the web scraping players data Python notebook, we can see what all the tools that we're gonna need are. The first one is scikit-learn. It's a very simple machine learning model. There's no deep learning here. We can run this code on the CPU with scikit-learn. And the idea of sports prediction, this is essentially time series prediction. And I wanna be very clear. Time series prediction is about predicting scalar values. And what we definitely don't wanna use for time series prediction is a large language model like GPT. Why? Because these large language models are ge gonna generalize the answer. And there is no use case when we would want to predict time series prediction using large language models. What we would instead want to do is use a dedicated machine learning model that's going to, you know, install that for us. And GitHub, you know, GitHub's code faces is going to ask us, do we want to install Python? Of course we do, because we want to use that interpreter to run this code. So you can see that this guy took this code from the football DB index. And let's go through this. It first got the, all the team URLs, so that's just one loop. And in the second loop, given all those team URLs, let's get all the player URLs. So now we have a list of all the players in the NFL. Now we're going to do some data scraping and you know, data cleaning where we remove all the empty columns in the rows. So we'll you know, make sure that that's running. And once we have all the player URLs and we have all the team names, then we can scrape the stats for each player. And we're gonna go through the list, remove any zero non, you know, null values and compile them all into a single CSV file, a data frame file that we can save as a CSV. And we have that right here. Now, the next step, once we have that, is to make that prediction. So if we go to this uh, other Python notebook, we can go through the code and we can see that once we open up that CSV file, we're gonna have all those features that I talked about, but we wanna improve that CSV file. You know, this is not enough. So we're gonna clean it, remove all those features that we don't need, and then we're gonna split this data set up, 
data set up into a training and a testing set. In the training set, we're gonna split it up into the first half of the season. The second half is gonna be the second half of the season to make predictions. And what you're seeing here are all the features we're gonna to use to make the prediction for the number of fantasy points, whether it's pa passing yards, passing touchdowns, et cetera. There's like 10 features. And once we do that, we're going to train a linear regression model with scikit-learn. It's super simple stuff. And with scikit-learn, we can create what's called a pipeline. And in this pipeline, we can have several instances of these models all running in parallel. And they'll all be running in parallel on a different set of features, whether it's a subset or all the features. And then we're going to test out all the models using the RMSE score, which is one of many scores used to compute the validity of a machine learning model. And you can see all the scores here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use something called grid search, which is a hyperparameter optimization technique that will pick the best of all of those models. And once we have picked all of the best of all of those models using grid search, then we can uh, run inference on those models and see what the optimal fantasy point player is going to be. And you can see how I did that right here, right? For these players, it's 130 rows, 130 predictions for 130 players in the NFL. And once we do that, that's great. Now we have the first three steps done. We've scraped some data, we've built three models, and we have selected the best model. But now comes the fun part. Let's deploy this thing to the web with Fast API. Now, a little primer on Fast API. Fast API is essentially a web framework in Python. It's very similar to Flask. And the difference between Flask and Fast API is that Fast API is a lot newer, it's a lot lighter weight, and it's a lot cheaper. And the, la and the best way to see what this looks like is to test out an example. And this is the best example right here, deploying and hosting a machine learning model with Fast API and Heroku. So we can see that with three commands, Docker build, Docker run, and Docker exec, what this code is going to do is it's going to run a simple stock prediction app in scikit-learn. And that stock prediction app is going to basically predict what the price of a given stock is going to be by training a scikit-learn linear, linear regression model on it with Facebook's profit, which is essentially like scikit-learn, but it's their own version. And once it do, does that, we can curl we can that prediction endpoint, and it's going to give us that prediction endpoint. Like, what is the prediction for that? And we will be able to see the prediction for that as well right here when we curl it. Right here. So when we curl to that address, it's running locally. We can see with this simple machine learning example, sepal length, sepal width, with these dummy values, it's going to give us a prediction, and it's right here, the predicted target. And now this is an API. It's running locally on our computer, right, with fast.api. We can replace the code in here with the code that we had earlier. So we're going to turn those IPython notebooks into .py files. And in those .py files, we'll run this code. So you could see this is just one route for an example test. And here's another route in the, in the predict route. It's going to run the prediction function. And you can see that in this prediction function, they run this training loop on this Yahoo Finance data. And we will replace that with our sports betting prediction. It's very similar. But the point is that now it's serving locally. Now we want to deploy this to Google Cloud. But before we deploy it to Google Cloud, Remember, we want this to continuously learn on new data every day because we need new price picks every day, right? Players, all this stuff is dynamic. And in order to do that, Fast API alone is not enough. We need some sort of orchestration tool, some sort of composer or conductor, some high level controller, which is gonna be able to say, I have all these different tasks. One of those tasks is training a model. One, another one of those tasks is testing a model. Another one of those tasks is retraining. And that conductor is called Apache Airflow. And this is an open source amazing tool and we're gonna use it to batch all of our tasks into uh, what's called a graph. So let me show you how to do this. So the first step for us is we wanna deploy an Airflow pipeline is to run Airflow with Airflow DB init. So Airflow DB init, and that will initialize an Airflow um, repository with SQLite, a database. And once that initialization is done, then we can run our Airflow, right? So this is gonna run an Airflow environment, which we can do with this command right here. 
and once Airflow is running, and we can see uh, Airflow running here and the scheduler as well, once Airflow is running, once Airflow is running, then we can visit that Airflow instance in the web at localhost 8080. And you will see that I already have this Airflow pipeline here. Let's go through what this looks like. All of these are called DAGs, Directed Acyclic Graphs. That's a fancy word for a machine learning pipeline. All of these are fancy dummy pipelines. But let's look at an actual pipeline, the one that I'm going to use here. So in this pipeline that I'm actually using, you can see what the graph looks like. And the graph essentially has five different steps. Start the process, download the data set, process it, so clean it, run two different uh, machine learning algorithms, and then pick the best one. And the best one is going to output the prediction that we want. Instead of 0 0.977, 0 0.933, it's going to output the sports players, the fantasy players at the end. And it's going to run this DAG, this directed acyclic graph, every single day. So what that means is we need to split up our code into different you know, components that we can run in a DAG. And let me show you what DAG code looks like. So if we go to this DAG pipeline.py file that I have here, what you see is Airflow being imported as a pip file, right? It's just pip install, pip install Airflow, and we have Airflow. It's nothing more than that. And once we have Airflow, we can create our DAG programmatically just like this. And you can see the programmatic version of the DAG that I just showed you, where we create different operators. And operators are how Airflow understands what different tasks are. We'll create operators for downloading the data set from Football DB, for transforming that data set, turning all those null values into removing them, right? Training our machine learning model with scikit-learn getting the output prediction of the fantasy points and outputting them to an index.html page. And what Airflow asks us to do is define this workflow with these uh, uh, characters right here. So we have our t tasks, extract the data, process it, you know, train these models and identify it. And when we launch Airflow, we can have multiple workers depending on how big our machine learning model is. So remember, we're not using deep learning here. So this is not gonna be huge. We're just using scikit-learn, ensembles, linear regression. You know, it's, it's super simple. So in these functions, we're gonna replace these Python functions with our sports betting Python functions for processing and running machine learning, very similar. And so that's what we deploy this is running locally, but that's what we want to deploy to Google Cloud. So it's running Airflow to orchestrate these every single day. Airflow is also running in our virtual machine on Google Cloud, so it knows to run that code, that Python code every day. But also, also in addition to Airflow, it is uh, it is deployed to Google Cloud and it is being served at an endpoint via Fast API that I can then access at any point. And, and you know ping. And if I want a user interface via Streamlit, I can add that too. But this isn't really for anybody. It's just for me to have a sports betting app that is updated every day. So that's the kind of basic overview of how this project works. We essentially want to take this simple sports betting Python notebook that takes data from the web, trains a scikit-learn machine learning model, linear regressor on it, makes predictions about the winning team, and turn that into a production app with fast API, which exposes an endpoint, which allows us to query it, and then have that run consistently every day. And the way we have that run consistently is with Airflow. And Airflow is the orchestrator for all of those things. And we deploy that to Google Cloud, to a single virtual machine that can run. And remember, Google Cloud gives us $300 in cloud credits, which is awesome. But once we deploy this, this is going to continuously run. So we want to stop it as well, or else we're going to run out of money, which we don't want. So given all these tools, let's put this all together and try out our predictions. So I have two predictions from this model. So the model is going to predict that the winning players are going to be Josh Allen and Justin Jefferson. So those are the two players that I'll pick from the model. But Odds Jam tells me that the top players are these. So I'll pick two from at random, Charlie Jones and let's say Bryce Young or one of them as well. And let's see which one wins um, at the end. This stuff is hard, right? Maintaining a model, training it, all that stuff, doing that all every day ourselves, it can get expensive. Um, and if we don't want to do all that, we could just use Odds Jam. So thanks to Odds Jam for having this fantasy optimizer tool available for all of us, you know, uh, sports heads and, you know, data curious people. Sign up today. You can find the link in the description. And until next time, happy learning.